When justice called for a payment for sin, no one worthy could be found among men. But the precious Son. Paid in full. I remember me and, my wa- me and my wife were visiting somebody in South Dakota, and I was preaching to her, of course, for about four hours. And then I said, we're going to sing you a song I had my guitar with. A lot of you people don't know I can halfway play guitar. I do. And we sang that song to her and her family. And when we were finished, she said, rub it in. (laughs) How do you like that? Rub it in. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life is rub it in because the blood of Jesus is the only thing that saves. Through the power of the blood, we were given life. And I definitely am one that appreciates that. For those of you who are into politics, interesting things are taking shape in America, and we also have things taking shape here. Uh, The border crossings, I've just listened, uh, was it a couple of days ago, the Border Patrol are basically giving up on stopping people from coming across thousands of coronavirus positive people have been dumped into cities all across America. And they say we're useless. On one, on one place, they're trying to force people to wear masks. On the other, they're bringing them in. What a bunch of hypocrites. I mean, even the dead understand already what they're doing. And if you don't, then you're worse than dead. Unbelievable stuff happening 
things are coming to a head and we will things ch uh, see changing. So what's happening here in Canada? Well, we know that the mask mandates and most of the restrictions have been lifted. And they're going to stay lifted if God is on that tr uh, track. So we better pray that he does, that it is his will, because we don't know for sure yet, complete, but I know, I know what the outcome is, but how long will it take? And I had a bit of a talk with God, or an argument. I said, Lord, what good is all this freedom that you're giving back to us? Mind you, I'm all for freedom. But what good is it? We'll go back to our sports, back to our money making, back to our whatever we're doing. And forgetting that God was trying to get our attention. God is saying, listen up. Time is coming to a close, and we need to reverence this God who created us. Many, many in the world do not even acknowledge God. Here in North America, the church world has become, I don't know what it has become anymore, because of the infiltration of the demonic powers in many, many church organizations. Homosexuality is the norm already. The Holy Spirit has told us it's okay. No, the Holy Spirit did not talk to you if he said homosexuality was okay. So is child molesting then. So is drunkenness. So is drug addiction and all these things. God doesn't change. He's still there and he's going to stay the same. What he wrote in the Old Testament was clarified in the New, and we better make sure we follow the rules that God give us. We're heading for an interesting time where God is going to determine who's following him and who is true to him. Those who pretend will be weeded out, they will be shown we can see it in the religious systems already. Now we see the vexers, we see those who wear masks, and we see those who defy it. So what is it? What is God doing? He's just showing us how people will succumb to the Antichrist. That's all he's doing. It's a precursor. I always wondered how on earth will the Antichrist uh, will he rule people like that? Because people are usually rebels, hard to rule. But when we saw what happened in the last year, my imaginations and my wonderings have ceased. The human heart usually go, goes the path of least resistance. I'll say that again. The human heart usually goes the path of least resistance. And if you are into God, you're going to resist the things of Satan. And the things of Satan are permeating through the governments of this world. And we better stand strong because God has a, an agenda. And this agenda that he has is going to get pretty wild, pretty interesting. So keep your eyes open, your ears open. I want to say this, God is not mocked. Whatever the world sows, it shall also reap. And I've also come to this conclusion. If God doesn't pour out his spirit, most of the world will go into damnation because they have absolutely no idea on who God is anymore. You look at the world system, look at the schools. They don't even, uh, there's universities. Anybody knows who Chick-fil-A is, the, the, the fast food service? He is a guy that reverences God. And he, the, the, the CEO of Chick-fil-A, the, the honor, he reverences God and he's not shy about it. You know what universities are doing all across America? They're boycotting Chick-fil-A 
in universities. They don't want him there because he's reverencing God. So God will have to do something to change their minds. Here's the deal. They have been indoctrinated for the last 50 years with the satanic teachings, evolution, atheism, and all these things. And in the meantime, the church was becoming more and more interested in the things of this world, sports, anything you name out there, they went for it. Which David Wilkerson, in one of his prophecies, he said he saw Satan coming before God. Listen to this. He saw Satan coming before God. Years ago, I would murder your children through my despots that I had around. It didn't work. They only got stronger. So God, I want to do something uh, different for the end times. I want you to give them everything they want. Whatever their heart's desire is, give them whatever, money, uh, sports, whatever they feel like. And God says, go for it. And this is what we've been seeing. If you think tribulation is where they persecute Christians, that's the real tribulation. No, the real tribulation is when your soul is at stake. And this is happening in North America. The things of this world are taking people away from God by the millions, and God has to turn that around. So we're going to see who God is today through the scriptures that I have because we cannot put them up. I think uh, the computer decided to update today. I don't know why it would pick a day like that. Maybe Satan had something to do with it. And God wants you to just trust me. I'm going to read it out of Scripture. So before we get into this message, let's rise and ask the Lord for blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you'll open our hearts to the truth of who you are. Lord, many of your children don't seem to understand that you're serious, that things are coming to a head. So, Lord God, help us to understand and bring it to these who do not know. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Lord is a good God, and he loves us. He wants us to understand he loves us with a passion. But if you do not want to follow him, you tie his hands, and that's simply it. We can pray for people. God can change people's hearts. If we would stand in the gap, if the people who are called by my name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, if they would repent, then I would heal your land. This is the promise of God. What do we do with that? Each individual has to seek out God for yourself. What do we do? Pray all day, pray for an hour? How many of us spend time on our knees? I don't spend a whole lot of time on my knees praying. I don't make a law to pray. But I do catch myself talking to God all day, pretty well all day. There is, I'd be doing something and God would remind me of, him, of something and I'd talk to him. This is why when I watch a movie, I usually go to the end to see how it turned out because I'm very, I'm very often interrupted while I'm watching. So I just go to the end, see how it turns out, and I know the story. That's how it's supposed to be. Don't waste your time watching something that didn't happen. Anyways, in Isaiah chapter 45 in verse 22, Look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I was watching something in India. How many of you know about the Ganges, Ganges River? According to a lot of Indians, that's Indian people from India, it's a holy river. The filthiest river on the face of the earth. 
but it's a holy river to them. They go in there, they drink the water, they wash themselves. I was watching something yesterday and I was thinking, Lord, you need to talk to those people. They have been dead in trespasses and sin and blindness for centuries and centuries. You need to speak to them. You need to pour out your spirit so that they'll see. And I believe God is going to do that. And that's not only there. It's all over the world. People are going out, treading away from God by the millions. God has to put a stop to it or else he's going to lose that great harvest that is prophesied for the end times. He will lose it to Satan. And if I know scriptures, he will not lose it to Satan. He is going to have a great harvest. So look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth. Isaiah chapter 46 in verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient things, times the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, meaning he will fulfill his will on this earth. Now listen to what he's saying. I am God, there is none else. I'm the one that shows you things. I want to ask any religion out there, in your books that you have, do you know what the future holds? Do you know what the past holds, what went on in the past? In the book that I read, which the Holy Spirit wrote, I know what's coming. And I know for a fact what happened in the past. No other religion can produce a book like that. God wants his children to understand we do not have to walk in darkness. We will know what's going to happen. We will understand the things that are happening if we dare pay attention to what he says to us. God wants to speak to each and every individual who comes to him by faith. He is a one-on-one -on -one God. He is not a God that just uh, gets everybody going in a, in a whole bunch of people. No, he is an individual God who loves you as an individual. You were created uniquely. There is none like you. There is none like me, thank God, because God wants us as an individual. He, wants, he has something for each and every one of us. He says he declares the end from the beginning. What does that mean, the end from the beginning? Because he sees the end and he goes back to the beginning and he knows what's going to happen. He knows exactly how we stand. He knows ancient times and ancient things. And he says, my counsel will stand and my pleasure will be done. So the governments of this world better listen up. Your agenda may be out there for all of us to see, but God's agenda will be brought through. I remember Hitler in, during the, the 1945 and the 1938s. I don't remember him but I read a lot about it. He was on course to change God's plan. There were a lot that were with him trying to change God's plan. And God said, no, it's not going to be changed. Hitler said, we're going to make the thousand year reign. He must have read the Bible somewhere. And God says, no, you will not. At 58, he was nothing. Or is it 52? I don't remember how old he was. He was just a mumbling zombie. That's how far he went in his world dominance. By the time he came to the end of his life, he was a mumbling zombie that killed himself. So this is what happens to all the despots that are trying to change God's plan. 
and I have a feeling, not only a feeling, I, in my spirit I know those who have been trying to change God's plans are going to be held accountable and there's going to be a great reckoning. Isaiah chapter 45 in verse 23, I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. Listen to what God is saying. You try to change him, forget it. I have sworn by my mouth, my righteousness will come to pass. And unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue will swear or will confess. Regardless how ungodly people are, the day comes when they will bow the knee to God. Hallelujah, that's going to be a great time. I'll be there watching. Surely shall one say, in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. God, those who turn to him, God will stand by them. But those who are incensed against him shall be ashamed. You can be sure. If you believe in Jesus, I don't care who's against you. The day will come when you will shine. And those who are against God, they will be ashamed. Satan will have to be ashamed as the whole creation will stand and say, we followed you. You're the thing that we followed. You're the thing that fooled us. What on earth was wrong with us? Too late, they will realize that they followed a complete fool. A fool, somebody who thought he was going to win and lost everything. He was fooled by his own pride. He was fooled by his own beauty. He was fooled by his authority. Guess what? God stripped him and the whole world, all of creation, will look at him and say, we followed you? What a dumb, how, how dumb we were. It says, in the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Are you the seed of Israel? I am. In, in Abraham, God said, in you, in your seed, shall all the world be blessed. Who is the seed of Abraham? It's Jesus Christ himself and all those who turn to him by faith. So we're going to be blessed. We're going to stand victorious in the end in Christ. We have everything. We're not the tail. We're the head. God created us in his image. We are the God kind. Satan, the angels, are not the God kind. We are. We are created in his image. And God is going to make sure, like the Apostle Paul said, he that has begun a good work in me, he will perform it unto the day of Christ. Yes, what God has set out to do to us, he will perform it. We can rejoice in that. So if you're discouraged today, look on ahead. The future is bright. We're going to rejoice and enjoy the rest of our eternity. But for those who don't know God, for those who thumb the nose at him, oh, what a different story that is. In Isaiah chapter 44 in verse 24, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb. So if you're wondering where you came from, you were formed by God in the womb. He has created the human being to be a procreator. And he's the one that's behind that power. Without him, there is no power. He has formed us in the womb. I am the Lord that makes all things that stretch forth the heavens alone. We weren't there to help him. In a way we were, we were in his breath. But he did it through his strength and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. That fr Listen to this. That frustrated the tokeners of the liars. 
that make de uh, diviners uh, mad, that turn wise men backwards and make their knowledge foolishness. What is this last scripture talking about? The frustration of the tokeners and liars. Those who depend on the demonic realm, they will be turned backwards. How many people trust in their horoscopes? It seems to be a very innocent thing. And a lot of people are into horoscopes. That's dabbling in witchcraft. God says he will make these people mad. The deviners, uh, the demonic realm, which are controlling people, they're being turned back by those who are under the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself is at war with them. The power of God is mighty, and he will turn the hosts of the demonic realm backwards. And he has brought us into that realm of war uh, warfare. To do that amongst ourselves, he says, go cast out devils. That's what we're supposed to do. When you watch TV today, you, they, they put that stuff on TV, uh, paranormal experiences. They wonder what's going on. I look at it and I see, are those people blind? Can't they see that there is a spirit world out there trying to control them, trying to glide to them? They don't, because most of the church has rejected their, that there is something like demons and the devil. They say there is an evil force out there, but they don't recognize the demonic realm is all around. We need to understand God will come against them. He will make liars out of them. They will begin to understand that their wisdom is nothing. How many of you ever went on the internet and watched Chuck Schumer kicking a demon off his chair? When that happened on TV, on the news, I looked at it and I wonder how many people understand what was happening there. I knew it instantly. But then after a while, you just punched in Chuck Schumer chasing a demon, and it'll come up if it's still on there. And it's real. Those people are worshiping devils. During the day, they come up in a suit, dressed all nice. In the evening, they take off their suit and put on their hoods and worship Satan right out, and they are not afraid to talk about it. They drink the blood of babies and of bulls and whatever they're doing. You, how do we know that? Go on the internet and you'll find out they're doing it. Hollywood is infiltrated with all these terrible things. How do I know? Because Christians come out of there and tell you about what's going on. There's this famous actor who said, gold and silver uh, has no value in Hollywood. What has value is the blood of little children. Think about it. That's a famous actor bringing it out. What are they into? They're into child sacrificing. God is saying, I will turn those people around. I will make them know that they're foolish. God is setting, getting ready, if not already, due to doing battle with Baal worshipers, and that's what they are. Look at all the babies they've been aborting. Why do you think that is? It is because they're sacrificing to their God, Baal. It's a sacrifice that went on for ages and ages. It's now just coming to a head and being shown everywhere. So God says, I will come against that. In Isaiah chapter 48, he tells us this, come you near unto me, Hear you this, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Jesus came to do what? To take care of the sin problem. 
God and his spirit has sent me. That's a very interesting scripture. So he came to set us free. Remember the innocence that you had when you were a child. I was reminiscing to this by myself not too long ago. I remember when I was a young kid, I was innocent. I was free in my heart. I didn't see any evil around me. Then slowly over time, that innocence left. Why? Because I came to the age of accountability and I started making choices against God. And that's when I started to realize that something is wrong. Hell is real. And I needed something. And when Jesus showed me what I needed, God was the one that came into view. How did he come into you? Through his son, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Guess what? When I accepted Jesus, over the years as I got to know him, my innocence returned. The joy of the Lord became my strength. Was I innocent in my everyday living? Not really, but the innocence in my heart was there because I understood I was forgiven. There was no more condemnation, and God gave me that innocence. Hallelujah. Now I can with an honest heart say, I'm redeemed. I've been, I've been saved by the precious blood of Jesus. Heaven is my destination, and Satan cannot in any way destroy me anymore. God has me in his protection. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. So are we in this position? Once this thing will lift, once this, these uh, restrictions will go, what will happen to us? I'm speaking to you over the internet. What will happen? Will it be back to same old, same old sports, money making? Nothing wrong with all of these. But if that's what you worship, then that's what you're going to have to receive. God wants us to come to him. We need to take time out during the week for God. How much time do we take out for God? Let's see, let's put us to the test. How much time do we spend watching movies? How much time do we spend making a living? How much time do we spend in sports? In all of those things. And let's see the time we spend with God. I've cracked that uh, system. Here's what I do. In whatever I do, I talk to God. And if you talk to God, you will not be into a whole lot of sin because God is there to remind you. This is why I say I have a problem watching a movie. Why? Because it becomes boring and God interrupts it too often. So I just go to the end on YouTube and watch the end. I know what it's all about. It's anyways lies anyway. So how do we talk to God? It's easy. All you have to do is call upon him and he will start talking to you if you dare to believe that he speaks to you. How many of us believe that God speaks today? He can give you a revelation. He can give you a prophecy. He can give you a command. He can say, I love you, my son or daughter. How many listen? They're caught in all sorts of problems. Things from the past have, have tied them up. They're, they're tied up by Satan that they don't hear the voice of God anymore. It's time to break free from that. God has given you to the ability. Just cry out to him, call him, have a relationship, and you will see things change drastically. If you want to know more about God's power, read Isaiah chapter 40. I was going to bring this here, but I figured I'll give you an assignment. Read Isaiah chapter 40. 
He was on the circle of the earth. He created. You go in there and he'll show you things that are incredible. God is real. He loves you and he wants a relationship with you. So let the Lord open your heart to this because we, I believe, are running out of time. God is going to stop winking at sin. He's going to bring it to a halt because before he can take his bride onto himself, he's got to at least get the attention of his bride. Can you imagine a bridegroom coming to pick up his bride and the bride say, oh, oh you, you will wait while, while I go do my washing first or something like that. No, she has to be ready because he's going to call and we're gone. There's not going to be time to get ready, so you have to get ready before it happens. Get to know him, get to know who he is, and God will open your heart to his incredible joys and secrets. Down in the valley with my Savior I will go Where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow Everywhere he leads me I will follow, follow on Walking in his footsteps till the crown be won Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere Up to where they gather on the hills of God. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I will follow. Everywhere he leads me, I will follow. 